Victoria and NSW have it better than any other Australian state. Those living in NSW and Victoria have it better than any other state, and the rest of the country's economy has collapsed around them while they have continued to boom. Former Reserve Bank chief economist Christopher Kent made a speech on Tuesday night about how there are two Australias, with Victoria and NSW separated from all the other states. In terms of housing, employment and the economy as a whole, NSW and Victoria have it better than anybody else. Once upon a time Queensland and Western Australia were booming due to mining. But since the decline in the industry, the two states have been seriously affected. During the mining boom, there were many employment opportunities for people across all industries like business services, transport and manufacturing. Mr. Kent said not all of them worked on site and were based all around the state. In response to those opportunities, there was a large rise in population growth in the mining states, Mr. Kent said. Much of the spending undertaken by the new and highly paid workers found its way into the local economies, further boosting economic activity. But there has been a decline in the mining industry in both Queensland and Western Australia and Mr Kent said it was because the industry shifted from the investment to the production phase and there weren't as many workers needed. He said there had since been a sharp decline in population growth in the states. There was a fall in commodity prices after its peak in 2011 in the states and Mr Kent said that also affected mining profits and wages. While mining has caused a fall in the economy in Western Australia and Queensland, Mr Kent said Victoria and NSW were blind to the effects. NSW, Tasmania, and Victoria have seen an improvement in their economic conditions, and in Victoria's case, a persistent rise in population growth, Mr Kent said. South Australia is also out of the Victoria and NSW bubble. Mr. Kent said it fitted somewhere between the mining and non-mining states. Unemployment outside of NSW and Victoria is also a problem. Mr. Kent said during the mining boom, labourers were heading to Western Australia and Queensland because there was a lot of full-time jobs that paid well. Since 2012, however, the situation has reversed. Full-time employment in Western Australia and Queensland hasn't increased, and the unemployment rate across those two states has risen noticeably, Mr Kent said. From 2012, mining investment and commodity prices were in sharp decline. In addition to the retrenchment of mining-related employment, those forces have also had a noticeable knock-on effect to non-mining industries in those states. Housing oversupply is another concern amongst states outside of Victoria and NSW. Mr Kent said housing prices and rent had declined in Perth, which showed the economy was weakening in Western Australia. With population growth also declining in the state, there just aren't enough people to fill homes that have been built. There were a number of building approvals being granted in Perth between 2012 and 2014, but the population was dropping, making it really hard to fill vacant properties. Mr Kent said in Western Australia there was one home for every new resident in the state, but not each person needs a home to themselves, meaning there's a lot of empty homes. In Victoria and NSW, there's one home for every 2.6 new residents. ComSec's State of the State's report released in May said both Victoria and NSW were Australia's best performing states. NSW had strong population growth and retail trade. Victoria had strong housing finance, retail spending and population growth. Queensland was ranked the fifth best state in the country, while Western Australia sat in sixth place. ComSec economist 7th Sebastian told the ABC Western Australia's economy continued to decline. I think those concerns around the mining boom 
the construction phase coming to an end, it's creating a bit more concern around unemployment and in particular, with population growth slowing as well, he said. Mr Kent said Australia was large and diverse and the economy was doing different things across all states. A key reason for the differences across the states over recent years has been the effect of the large declines in mining investment and commodity prices. These have contributed to weaker economic conditions in the mining states and, therefore, weight on economic conditions nationally, he said.